Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we are figuring out whether or not my supercharged S2000 has a hot air intake. So you can see the air intake right here, it's towards the front of the engine and it is, you know, within the engine bay. So perhaps it's not in the greatest spot uh, as far as drawing in cool air. So it's also kind of near the exhaust. And so what I'm trying to figure out in this video is do I need to do anything about this? And so in order to figure that out, I have four different thermocouples which I've wired around the engine and so I'm going to be using this device right here essentially it's just a fancy thermometer I've got thermocouples which I can attach to it and read off what the temperature is in various locations so the four spots we're going to be looking at we've got a thermocouple on the front side of the air intake which is you know towards the front of the car we've got one on the back of the air intake which is closer to the exhaust so we'll see if there's a difference in temperature on the front and the back of that air intake I've also got one kind of smack dab in the middle of the engine bay, so right up on top of the engine. Uh, that'll probably get fairly warm since it's in the center, right above all the heat, and it also has some insulation above it on the hood. And then finally we have our control, which is going to be up front. So, you know, best case, let's say our air intake was routed so that it could pull air directly from the front of the vehicle. We'll know what temperature that air is, and then we can compare it to the temperature on the air intake itself. Now, I don't know what the results are going to be. I'm certainly interested in finding out. I don't think it's gonna be as bad as it looks. I think, you know, when the vehicles kind of come to a stop, then it's probably gonna get pretty warm in there. But then once I'm moving, I think, you know, kind of turbulent air is gonna be mixing all around this engine bay and keeping those temperatures down. I don't know that, so we're gonna go test it and find out what actually happens. Okay, so here we have our four readings. You can see they're all floating around 20 degrees Celsius uh, before the engine is started. So the engine's been off, it's been sitting in the garage overnight, nothing is warm on it, and they're all kind of floating around 20 degrees Celsius. So here on the top left, we have our ambient. We'll be comparing that to our intake numbers, which are the front of the intake and the back of the intake. And then here we have the top of the engine. So we'll be monitoring these as I drive around at different speeds and see what impact it has on our intake temperatures. Okay, so just sitting here idling, uh, the engine's all the way warmed up. I've driven out to the middle of nowhere. We're gonna do some different tests with this. So I'm actually surprised I've been monitoring it as I've been driving. Uh, and it's more of a difference than I expected it to. Uh, but anyways, just sitting here idling, ambient temperatures reading about 20 degrees. This fluctuates depending on if the fans are on or not. Our intake front is measuring 40 degrees, so 20 degrees warmer, and our intake back is reading 55 degrees, so about 25 degrees Celsius warmer. So a significant difference, but again, we're just sitting here stationary. So I'm gonna start to drive, and then we will see where these temperatures go. Okay, so cruising at about 20 miles an hour. We've got about a 17 degree difference between the outside temperature and the front of the intake. And then the back of the intake is about 30 degrees warmer than uh, the very front of the car. So best case scenario, you know, you could be dropping probably 30 to 35 degrees Celsius uh, with having the intake mounted directly up front. Now it's probably gonna be some average between the intake front and the intake back. Um, so probably somewhere in the 20 degree uh, temperature differential on average that you're gonna have uh, between the front of the car and this intake traveling at 20 miles an hour. So we're gonna speed up to 40 and see what it says there. All right, cruising along at 40 miles an hour. It's about 15 degree difference between ambient and the front of the intake and about 30 degree difference between ambient and the back of the intake. Um, so again, you know, that's actually a pretty significant difference in temperature, uh, probably at least about 20 degrees Celsius cooler air that you could get if you rerouted that intake or perhaps put in, you know, a heat shield uh, protecting it from the exhaust portion uh, so that that backside of the intake was pulling in cooler air. All right, so now traveling at 60 miles an hour, we are seeing less of a difference. So it's about 10 degrees warmer uh, on the front of the intake from ambient, and it's about 20 to 25 degrees warmer uh, on the back of the intake from ambient. Uh, so certainly as you get into these higher speeds, uh, the differential becomes less as you have more turbulence within that engine bay and you've got cooler air coming in. All right, so now we're gonna do something a little bit different. I'm gonna do some hard acceleration and then, you know, brake a bit, get back on the acceleration, brake a bit, get back on the acceleration, try to get the engine really hot and see, you know, if we were really pushing the car, what sort of temperature differences would we be seeing? All right, 
So it seems to somewhat have leveled off, pushing the car fairly hard. Uh, we're getting about 18 degree difference between ambient and the front of the intake, and about a 38 degree difference uh, between the ambient and the back intake. So, you know, 18 to 38, so we're looking at somewhere around a 30 degree temperature differential, which is significant. So if you're pushing the car hard, uh, this is saying that, you know, you could potentially be getting around 30 degree cooler air uh, Celsius by relocating that air intake. So this has been pretty fascinating for me. I actually wasn't expecting to see numbers uh, in the range that I saw. You know, it's actually a pretty significant difference uh, where the intake is versus ambient conditions if you were to be able to get best case uh, airflow into that intake. So interesting to see. I think two potential solutions would be to either relocate that air intake, kind of draw it closer to the front of the car, or perhaps put in a heat shield between that air intake and the exhaust to try and block some of that hot air from coming over and reaching it. So if you guys have any questions or comments, of course, feel free to leave those below. Thanks for watching.